I'm Rochelle Rizzi with LaVray Noir. Today I'm here with my good friend, Mike Chevalino. He is an author and a speaker and an entrepreneur, which is why he's here with us today. I wanted to bring him to the table because he has an extraordinary story to tell, not only from where he came from, but what made him suddenly decide that he's going to turn the page, write a book, and start an entire new chapter to his life. Hi, Mike. Hi, Rochelle. How are you? Thank you for having me on your show. You're very welcome. I'm doing great and glad to see you today. So, Mike. Likewise. Start from the beginning. Where where did all this come from? Because I know I met you. You were um, CEO of Short Creative Group. You still are. But we're not here to talk about that today. I want to talk about the entrepreneurial journey. But then I really want to focus on what's next for you and what we're working on. Uh, well, sure. So, yeah, I'm, I'm the CEO of Shore Creative Group, uh, or a full-service marketing agency located here in New Jersey. I've been in marketing and advertising all my life, uh, but really, uh, things changed profoundly for me uh, when I became a dad, which was not until I was 42 years old. Uh, so I had had this whole life before uh, becoming a dad, and not only did I become a dad, uh, and of course, a, a, a husband, too, um, a few years before that, but... Um, not only did I become a dad, but I became the dad to triplets. And not only were they triplets, but two of them were born on the, or diagnosed later on, on the autism spectrum. And so that really changed everything for me. And that was the impetus, with, which is where I eventually wound up uh, with this first book. Well, so, and then you also had a pretty life-changing diagnosis for yourself in there too. Yeah, lots of good good times here. Uh, so I uh, was diagnosed with uh, chronic leukemia uh, about nine years ago. And uh, that really sort of made a profound shift in, um, you know, how I, how I felt about uh, my life and about what I wanted to do with it and being grateful for, you know, everything that I have in my life rather than woe is me that I have, you know, two children on the spectrum. I decided uh, that I needed to look at, at things in a profoundly different way. Uh, the blessing here was that my wife uh, is a uh, oncology nurse practitioner and her specialty is blood cancers. And she's been working at this for over 20 years. So I basically have a live-in uh, nurse practitioner uh, here. So I, I sometimes think my mother from in heaven is responsible for that one. Uh, so I'm just truly blessed. Well, and I think that that leads you to talk about um, seizing the moment and why you're writing this book right now and what what's sparking inside you to to do this and make this giant shift in your life. You know, I've always enjoyed uh, writing, um, whether it be a blog post or even social media copy or uh, anything, uh, just writing in my journal. So I knew it was always there. It was uh, finding the confidence and doing some exploration uh, to, to get there. So a few years ago, I had attended, um, I started to follow uh, Mike Michalowicz, who we both know, uh, and I read his book, Profit First, and I went to a authorship workshop that he had, and I knew then that I had to write a book. And so uh, I took a, a workshop, and uh, over this past year, 2020, a pandemic, by the way, is a very good environment for writing a book. It's not good for a lot of things, uh, but that would be one uh, I would say you could get done. So during the course of 2020, uh, I completed my first manuscript. Oh, very good. Um, and I have the very uh, distinct pleasure of being able to read the manuscript. And uh, I know that you've added the intro and you're trying to figure out how to put all the finishing touches on it. But that common thread for you seems to be being of service to your target audience for this book, which is parents of those people, those people who have special needs children. Um, talk more about that. Yeah. 
and thank you for saying that because I think for many years of my life I uh, I struggled with that uh, concept uh, because I feel like I am a person of service and I feel best about myself when I am in that role uh, serving others. And I did think, and I still do in some ways, that uh, you know a marketing agency can be of service. It certainly does provide uh, great services to clients and to their end users. Um, and you try to create a holistic environment by you know hiring people and empowering them. Uh, but really, that wasn't it for me. It was coming home to this population that's right here in my home with, with my children and trying to help other parents who are about to go through uh, this, this journey of being a special needs parent. It is a journey. Yeah, and you're pretty real about it in your manuscript. Um, you, you lay out some F-bombs. <laughs> we can edit those. <laughs> you talk about some, you know, the bourbon, like, you know, and it's in a joking way, not to encourage bad behaviors, but it's really real. And I think in doing that, you're building this community. Um, and do you want to talk about the yeah. title of the book more about what that means? And I know that it's not set in stone yet, but um, talk truly about what that means to you. You know, thanks Rochelle. The title of the book right now is called Super Parent. The core message of the book is having a special needs child in your life is not a detour. This was the life you were meant to live. You can do this. And that became my core message and the title for my book because of the personal challenges that I went through running away from having special needs children, not knowing how to cope with uh, what it amounts to trauma uh, on a daily basis. And if you're a special needs parent out there listening to this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Things like meltdowns or you know, the not being able to go anywhere, the isolation, just the challenges that are day after day after day, the inability to work as much. Uh, so all of that closes in on you. And for me, it led to some self-destructive behaviors, which included, you know, I wasn't an alcoholic, but I drank more than I should. And it certainly impeded my productivity. And, uh, you know, my wife and I were just completely overwhelmed. So you have to get to a point where you pick yourself up and get beyond that and start to see the good and the great in all this and be a champion for your children. And there are a lot of reasons that I outline in the book uh, for doing so and a lot of ways that you can incorporate this into your life. And I would venture to guess that you saw that there was a huge need for this because you may not have had what you're hoping you're giving right now. You know, uh, to that point, Rochelle, um, a nod needs to go out to the trailblazing parents of, uh, you know, several decades ago who had special needs children when there was a stigma about them, when uh, they were not accepted, when there were no programs for them. And those parents basically blazed a trail. And now the next generation blazes a trail for the future one. And so that's a role that I want to play with this book to show future parents that this is not the end of your life. Just because this isn't the life that you had prepared for or planned for in college or when you got married, uh, it's a different life. And uh, it has many more blessings than you've uncovered as of yet. And I'm really hopeful that healthcare workers, other caregivers, teachers, anyone who's touching your child's life reads this also to have empathy for the parents and identify some gaps in their own professions that they can offer to the parents. There needs to be more of this, a bigger community, more support, more resources. And I hope that you're the number one book that they pull from um, and become the expert to go to. Um, I know that you really hope to um, speak to larger audiences, whether right now in virtual or in person going forward. Um, and to all of those audience, while this one book is focused to parents, I know you're already working on things that um, we'll talk about all the other uh, tertiary audiences coming about. Yeah, I have a couple of ideas in the works for a second book. Uh, but I feel though, as though if we have a message here that's important to our audience, which is special needs parents, and I do feel that this is an important message, 
And I feel it's important because of my own experience and because I know many, many hundreds of special needs parents who struggle uh, with these ideas of, of getting a hold of their situation, wrapping their arms around it and living their best life. So I feel like I have an obligation to get this book into the hands of as many people as possible to get that message out as far and wide as possible. So that is the goal. Yeah, so hopefully all of us here will help you with that and spread the word. Um, I also want to make sure you have time to talk about the podcast that you're working on. So I'm very excited about the new podcast. We'll be dropping that sometime in uh, March. And uh, the title of the podcast is Empowered, Not Impaired. Uh, and it will shine a light on uh, having a special needs child in your life is not a detour. Uh, we will talk about all of the issues uh, that impact having a special needs child. We'll give tips. Uh, we'll talk to influencers. Uh, we'll talk to parents, educators, uh, and those who have taken special needs or taken autism or Down syndrome uh, and turned it into a hero story for themselves and their family. So I'm truly excited about that. Yeah, me too. I mean, that's that's going to be a great precipice of this community that you're building. Um, I think there's the sky's the limit and there's so much energy around all of the things that you're creating. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Excited to work with you on it. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Um, what else would you like to say about what's next for you or the becoming that is the Mike Chevalino brand? Yeah, so the next thing is this second manuscript, uh, which I have a few ideas floating around for, uh, and I'll begin work on that uh, this month, actually next week, creating a couple of outlines for the book, and uh, then go out and get this book edited and promote it and uh, you know, speak to audiences about it and uh, just get the word out there uh, about empowerment, about uh, special needs parents uh, being able to live a life that uh, they truly never imagined that they could live. Is there any one story that stands out to you that would be a good lesson that you could share here in this conversation for the audience about being a super parent? Anything that strikes you of like, you went through this one moment and maybe you didn't think you could get through it. And in that, in telling that story, you might be able to give a tip to share. Uh, well, there are many of, many of those that I didn't think I would get through. Uh, but I, I will tell you that uh, when they first came home, you know, we had already known at that point that my daughter was in distress and, and had some needs and ultimately not only was she diagnosed with autism, but she has neurofibromatosis. So all three of them finally came home from the NICU 41 days after they were born. And I talk about this in the book. And uh, the nursery was set up seriously. It looked like a, a neonatal intensive care unit. So thankfully, again, we had my wife as a nurse uh, to help organize the entire thing. And I felt like I was working in a hospital unit. The children were hooked up to sleep apnea monitors, uh, they were on three different formulas. There were round the clock shifts where I would go to work, come home, sleep, so I could get up for the midnight to 7 a.m. shift of taking care of the kids. Rochelle, I never thought I would ever get through that. I remember us like both being in tears and um, just being completely overwhelmed and sleep deprived. Uh, you know, and then there were the visits to the therapists in the middle of the winter where they're hooked up to their monitors and you're driving around with three little chicks. So um, I never thought I would get through that. And so for folks who are about to go through something like that, even if it's one child, uh, you just have to take it one day at a time. You just have to realize that you will get through this, uh, that you're a champion for your child. Uh, but the other thing that we learned is that we, we built this, this tribe, this community of folks to help us. Her her mother, neighbors, my sister. So you take some pressure off yourself that way. And, you know, when there are times when you need to lean into your community, uh, that's when you have to do it. And so this was one of those cases. Well, and that's a really powerful story. And I, I can't relate to having um, a special needs child, but I can relate to having to be strong enough and believe in yourself to make a shift and rely on the people you trust. So that's kind of the entrepreneurial thread, I think, that 
a lot of entrepreneurs are risk takers. Um, there's a lot of resiliency and tenacity. So whether people listening to this are parents of special needs, children or caregivers, they're likely an entrepreneur and can relate to that kind of struggle, that internal struggle, because that's everything from despair and grief and trying to go through the whole process of acceptance of this is my life. Um, that's something that you can't change, but you can change the way you react to it. And I think that is why I couldn't put down the manuscript. It was something that was just thank you so powerful um, that, like I said, while I'm not a parent of special needs, this was a really powerful book. Like I just can't say that enough. Well, I, I'm completely flattered and greatly appreciate uh, those comments, especially coming from you, Rochelle. So thank you. Uh, I feel like, and I would like other parents to feel like this, especially if you're an entrepreneur, all your failures in your life, all your pitfalls, all your moments of despair have prepared you now for this moment. Everything that has happened before is absolutely perfect. You should not wish to change a thing. And you now use that to your advantage uh, for this next chapter of your life. That was absolutely the case for me. And I want that for uh, everyone out there who's listening. That is a beautiful message and a great way to end this. Um, thank you so much, Mike, for your very powerful and true words. I hope that everyone finds some inspiration from this. Thank you so much, Rochelle. It's an honor to be on your show. I appreciate it very much.